<laughs> this seance was recorded on the 21st of October 
that is a terribly helpless. Must well, be very, very poor. I wish I knew how. It's very problematic. It really is, you know. What does one say to people? It depends, on it? Oh, well. Poor little love, I wish I could come give you a big kiss. Thank you. I send you a kiss. You'll come through, I mate. I send you a kiss. Huh? <laughs> You're not worrying too much about finances, are you? No, not at the moment. At the moment it's working out. It's always in the back of my mind, you know, because when a person is so ill... Well, I don't know. A lot of Poor money. little love, I feel sorry for you. Because your old man's a bit of a worry for you yeah. and all that, and... I don't know what one can say. I mean, I don't want to say the wrong thing, but I know from what they would tell me that it's a gradual process, and I don't think you realise or even think it's possible he could ever be back to normal, do you? Oh, no, that is impossible. It's just got to drag on. Yeah. I mean, what can one say? Yeah. He <laughs> kind of laughing, though. It's fine. I don't mean about you, love. <laughs> uh, but but <laughs> I can't help laughing. That girl, she's, uh, she sits cross-legged like a yogi. <laughs> Which girl? Me. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, Mickey. How are you? Oh, I should live up on the right side. And <laughs> then, uh, I'm all right, bless your heart. But I want to say to you, if I may say so, without giving the wrong impression, I don't know whether you're anticipating on it, uh, but uh, there's going to be something in the wind, which is already developing anyway, and there's some sort of an upheaval. It's not immediate, but they say you're not to worry because things are going to be much better than you dare hope. But I think there's something happening uh, between the two on you. Oh, is it exciting, Mickey? Uh, he's quiet, though, isn't he? Not at home. No, <laughs> well, he leaves you to... Uh, you see, he's a funny boy, really. Uh, but his head's screwed on the right way, even though you may not think so sometimes. But he's much more practical than you're giving credit for. Well, I'll take your word for it, Mickey. <laughs> Do what? Thank you, Mickey. No, jokes apart, and well, I am serious. Uh, I don't think you two are anticipating any big change. But that I have to tell you that there is someone associated with you, mate, uh, in a business connection... And whether you realise this or whether you don't, there's something in the wind. Do you know if there's been any discussion going on about changes? Uh, yes. I Do what? Yes, I, I think it's the same thing uh, you mentioned to me last time I was uh, last time I talked to you. Yeah, well, I don't want to rub it in, but what I want to tell you is, don't get in a, a panicky state of mind. Because there are certain things going to happen in connection with your affairs, material affairs, and it's as if somebody moves away or leaves. I don't mean you moving, yeah. uh, somebody else. And there's some discussion which you may not have heard yet, but has been going on behind the scenes. There's something in the wind, and it will affect you in a way, but not unduly. And I think that once you get back into your stride, which you'll have to do, You'll be glad it's all over, but you're going to come out all right eventually. And also, has there been a lot of correspondence, not with you, but with someone to do with your business affairs with a broad? With their what? With a broad! Oh, with a broad. Yes, there has been. Yes. Yeah, there's something in the wind. It's to do with money, it's to do with business. It will have some sort of effect, and somebody moves or changes and you have to reorganize or replane. It won't affect you in a bad sense, really, but you'll be a bit unsettled. Uh, and uh, do you live high up? Yes, we do. Yeah, well, I don't know whether I should go into that side of it, but this is where you're living. Yes, yeah. that's right. Yeah, well, is, it, is it where you're living, you high up? Yes, very high up. Oh, in, the, in the place where you're living? That's right. Yeah, because I don't know whether I should say all this, but I don't want to get uh, you muddled up or anything, but I'm told to tell you <laughs> uh, that there's changes in that direction as well, oh. but that isn't immediate. That is much later on. I don't know whether I should say certain things because it's always difficult to prophesy to date. Time is a very peculiar business. We're not very good at time. In fact, we're out of it. But I'm just going to say there's going to be two events 
one will be to do with your affairs and the business connection or whatever and the other will be a change in where you are living but that's not immediate okay thank you Nick. yeah you don't I, can't, <laughs> I hope you're more sensible than this but someone says hold on to what you've got and don't be tempted to do anything that you could regret and that's to do with monetary affairs Okay. Um, oh dear. Have you uh, have you got a? Uh, perhaps I shouldn't talk about it. Uh, I, I, it's very confusing. I, I was told something just now, and I don't know whether I should repeat. But they're talking about two accounts. Two accounts. Yeah, money. Yes. Have you got two banking accounts? Yes. Uh, is there something to do with a third? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, to do with a... To do with... Me. Yeah. I've got a building society account. Yeah, well, this is the same thing to me. It's still a bank, you <laughs> see. Um, and they say that they want you to be sensible and not to spend what you shouldn't spend or don't be tempted, but to hold on to what you've got and let things take their course. And... Um, I know this all sounds a bit odd, and you wonder why one talks about material things in such a way, but they say, you too strive desperately to be content as you are. Don't take any chances, hold on to what you have, wait and things begin to open up and develop, and that will be ch next year is going to be quite a year, one way and another. And I think it will start in the spring, from what they tell me, as far as we can tell time. But next year is going to be a year which will have surprises, and you'll come out on top. I, I know the message I'm getting like with you two is very material. It's all very well to be esoteric and all that, <laughs> but you've still got to walk the bleeding earth, mate, and keep your feet on the ground, see, and have balance. It's no good just being all up there and neglecting everything else. You've got to be balanced. And they want you two to be sensible, you are practical, but don't get too involved with mental and spiritual things that you neglect the essential things. And you can't find peace and quietitude of spirit and happiness unless to some extent you have your feet on the ground. They want you two not to get carried away and to look after yourselves and to be patient. Okay. Wow. Well, I'm longing to spend all my money, Mickey. Do what? I'm <laughs> longing to spend my money, but I won't. I'll leave it in the building society. What are you going to do with it? Well, I want it to spend it. Look, love, I'm not saying I don't know. I don't think you're one of those stupid people who run around and see a new hat and they're going to have it. But the point is, love, hold on to what you've got. Be patient. Let it have a reasonable sort of interest that you can, you know... Don't be avaricious or stupid. Just be patient. Let things take their course. Right. Thank I don't know whether you had a bee in your body about this coming few weeks or what, uh, spending rather more than you should. Yes. Because <laughs> they say, tell her to keep her money where it's safe. <laughs> right, and thank keep you. your hand off the checkbook. <laughs> right, I'll be careful, Mickey. I'll be careful, well. yeah, you be careful. None of this writing out big checks for large sums of money. Otherwise, you're going to have great regrets, mate. And you could have a very pleasant, happy time without doing this, that, the other. After all, you've got plenty of things, ain't you? Yes. I don't know why I keep getting this. I shouldn't go into all these material things. But sometimes I feel I have to. Jeff. Jeffrey is... Jeffrey is Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Uh, hold on, someone button in. <laughs> Are you Pabbit, Patricia? Oh, thanks, Mickey. You're a bit of a case, ain't you, girl? <laughs> I suppose I am. Yeah. Your people are very much around you today, your parents and sister. Oh, and I think there's been a lot of love being poured around onto you, mate. And you've had your ups and downs and your headaches. And they're not all your own headaches, either. They're a lot of them are other people's. But you can't help it, that's the way you are. But your people are very much around you, trying to help you and loving you. And uh, your husband's a bit of a case. Uh, I must tell you about him. 
And I think oh, he's oh, kind yeah. of laughing. He's a bit of a character, of course, and he hasn't changed all that much. But oh, um, God, he's strange. still very much the same in many respects. But he, he just wants you to know uh, that he's occasionally around you and helping you. Uh, but I think he's been a bit upset because you had some problems on one another. But... Of course, you see, we try to do what we can on this side of life to help people. Like, well, of course, there are lots of things we can't do. I mean, we're not in fallibations, you see. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes. yes. Tell him not to be upset. Everything do what? Good. Tell him not to be upset. Everything well, I wouldn't say upset's the word. No. I no. think it is that it's if you love people, and we do love each other, yeah. in spite of all our failings and weaknesses when on earth and all the rest of it, we are very concerned with people we love, and it wouldn't be human or natural if we weren't concerned. I wouldn't say we exactly worry to any great extent, but we are concerned, you see. And because we all know that the time will pass and then you'll all be here with us anyway. But the point is you've got to face up to whatever it is from day to day and month to month, and you've got to put on a brave front. And of course there are lots of things that cause concern to everybody. But life goes on, yes. and uh, you know the end of the road is peace and quiet, and you'll be perfectly happy with the people over here. And, and of course, we have a greater understanding. That's another thing people don't realise. No. We understand much more than people give us credit for. We understand the problems and the difficulties, and we make allowances because no one's perfect. We weren't perfect when we were there, so why should we expect you lot to be perfect? Well, it's nice he's there today because it was my wedding day. Really? Yeah. Well, that's a few years ago, yeah. then, ain't it? It is. Yeah. And <laughs> did you promise to honour and obey? I did, yeah. Yeah, I bet you did know you, <laughs> even if it was hard going. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And you see, marriages, that's how I made in heaven. Yes. Well, they develop in heaven, I wouldn't say they're made in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> then again, we don't have marriage like you do. No. Marriage is a material, man-made thing. I used to make this one get the baby new frock. Hold on, I'll be back. <laughs> sure, sure, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's all kind, isn't it? I used to see that. How's your Mrs. Mel? All right, thank you. Thank you. I beg yours. Pardon? She's all right. She's all oh, right. She's fine. She's, she's, I think she's all right. I mean, you think. <laughs> oh, she wasn't feeling too good this morning, but I think she's all right. I could say. I think most people are under the well of I don't know. Funny thing, ain't it? I, you know, I never lived long enough for all that, but I saw plenty with my mum and dad and that, but... Um, I, I mean, after it's a matter of give and take and make excuses and allowances, no one's perfect. But my mum and dad, oh boy, oh boy, oh, could they go for each other? They <laughs> 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 could have laughing though, in a way. Actually, I always did well out of it when they'd had a row, because, you know, they should go to the pub. She'd go in one bar and he'd go in the other. So I always got two lots of pop and two arrowroots, you see. <laughs> I used to go from one bar to the other. Mum, you know. Oh, good love us. Long time ago now. Seems ages. I wonder if I'd ever got sliced. Does it? I think I might have done. Who knows? I can't imagine myself being father. Good star for crows. Anyway, this won't do. I'll go. Uh, hold on. Oh, dear. Cheer up, Jane. I am. We're not having you over here yet. No. <laughs> Got enough trouble now. Yes, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> How's your Greek boyfriend? <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, he's fine. Oh, dear, Mickey. A bit no. tired after last night. Do what? A bit tired <laughs> after last night and mopping up the water. <laughs> he's a bit of a great, isn't he? I don't know. Life's a peculiar business. <laughs> You know, it really is looking into your world. Sometimes if we didn't have a giggle, we'd have to cry. People are strange. We all make mistakes. No one's perfect. Well, we have to learn. Because you're caught up with this Indian bl bloke, aren't you? you know? Yeah, that's right. Uh, he is quite a character, ain't he? Oh, he is. Oh, well, not for me to say. Hold on. Get cracking. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. Mickey 
she's in the mood today. Yeah, yeah. excellent. <laughs> oh, there's another spot of water fell on me. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> another spot of water fell on what? Oh, lovely. What's she on about? <laughs> I think we're all taking it for ourselves. <laughs> Very odd what was on the desk. Hmm? Whose desk? Your desk. My desk? Well, your boyfriend's desk. <laughs> oh, you oh, mean the leave. leave? yeah. Yes, the airport. Wasn't it beautiful? Yeah. I meant to bring it today, but with going to the hospital, I forgot. What was that? The, the airport. Leave, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I saw it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You can come back and see it, you know, I'll just give it from after the sitting. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm sorry, Nell, I really meant to, but it went out of my mind. What's making you feel lost when it comes to food? Well, it can't do it. You do. <laughs> Cheer up, Robert. Yes, Mickey. I think the new sweater has got to him. It has. Yeah, I guess so. Well, I've never known it to rain over here, so you'll be all right. <laughs> well, I wish we were all over there now, Mickey. The only storms we have over here are within people. And that's something that happens occasionally in the initial early stages, you know, the bursting, as it were, the bonds and all that. Oh, of course, you do meet a few lot of wet people as well coming over, but they dry out eventually. <laughs> <laughs> like Brendan Bear or something. Yeah. No, people got funny ideas, you know. I mean, really just people talk about heaven and hell and all that nonsense, you know. It's what you make it, it's what you are. You create your own environment, whether it's in your world and this. Of course, other people help to create the environment. You can't do it to yourself completely. But uh, when you get down to basics, though, we are all, in a sense, creating our own environment. And, and we're also bringing into our own lives many things which we could have avoided if we'd have gone about things the right way. As you think, so you are. But no one can live to self alone. We're all affected by other people's thoughts and influences and also actions that follow. I mean, whatever happens in your world, more or less, is what man has brought into being by his own stupidity or whatever. I mean, whether it's war or what, and man's interfering with nature, and of course nature's rebelling. Oh, well, hold on. Just want to get the baby new frock. What's that with you? Nothing. <laughs> oh, shut up. Don't cross your legs. Don't get on to them, Mickey. Oh, I'm not getting on to him! But you have to keep the mid position, you know. He's oh, been, he's you been know, been, it's a, you have to have some discipline. He's oh. been going through a very trying time. Oh, so what? He's all right. He knows he's looked after. He'll come out on top. And when he comes over here, he, <laughs> boy, oh boy. Talk about them, I'm <laughs> He's all right. As far as mediums go, I could have done a lot worse. <laughs> <laughs> what was that you said, Mel? I didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said something. That lady near you, she's had her legs crossed. No, I no. don't have them no. yeah, no, yeah. uh. no. And if no, your feet are killing, you take them strong. off. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. You take them off. <laughs> I can see you. Oh, well, I'd better get on with a job. After all, it'd be a long time before I have a chance to talk to you lot again, my name. Yeah, that's yeah. probably yeah. about six months, maybe. Six months? Mm. That's a long time. That's a long time. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I can't laugh, you know. Yeah, yeah, I do. They'll have to sit once, and, once every six weeks and play. If anyone wants to ask anything, I mean, if I could do anything to help in any way, I mean, don't all shout at once, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Mickey, are you going to have to get born again? Are you going to have, have to what? Are you going to have to get reincarnated? Not what I need to do with it. <laughs> well, How do you No, no, I don't want to come back to your world. But will you have to? Do you know? Well, I don't know about this have to business, but 
I'm not saying that there aren't people who do incarnate or reincarnate, but invariably there are people who have chosen to do that deliberately. All the great teachers and all the great prophets and all the great seers through the ages have been sent back or come back into your world to do a specific job for their age or their period of time to enlighten humanity, to show the way, the path and the light. And man, of course, is expected or hoped to follow. But unfortunately, man behaves so stupidly when they have a beautiful realization of what it could be and what it should be and how to live and how to inhabit mentally and spiritually the things of the spirit. It, unfortunately, man invariably turns it into something which was not intended into an organization or some religious whatever it is and then they have firm fixed ideas and material aspect of things takes over and they lose the real essence of what it was all about whatever religion you look at you find that more or less man has created something that was never intended i mean the true spirit of the christ is not necessarily to be found in the confines of a church or an organization. That doesn't mean to say that nice, genuine, sincere people don't do the best they can and follow out. But the point is, there's so much power in the church of a material nature. And this applies in practically all religions. Man creates a religion which was never intended. Jesus came to show a path and a light. He had nowhere to lay his head. And he turned the money changers out of the temple. And this is true. You know as well as I do that religion doesn't necessarily follow out what was originally intended. And once a thing becomes materially powerful, it loses its identity and its spirituality. I mean, we, we have very strong views too, you know, over here. I mean, a lot of the people, the people who find it often most difficult to adjust over here are very narrow-minded religious people because they've got firm fixed views and ideas and they cannot accept anything beyond that which they have been experiencing and taught from generations of time. Religion in some ways can be a very bad thing if it becomes narrow and it becomes something that really inhibits mental and spiritual growth. I mean, whether you look in Ireland or Iran, religion has much to answer for. Religion often is behind a lot of the agonies of your world. And that's why we do not want this truth to become a religion. And, and in fact, you can always be suspicious of anything that grows into a religious group or organization. It was never intended. The true spirit which flows through all, or should be flowing through all humanity, has got nothing to do with the confines of churches and temples. Those are inhibiting. Often man becomes uh, so materialistically concerned uh, in propagating and sometimes you know, it's very funny. I mean they propagate the things of the spirit or that's what they say they're doing but at the same time they're looking with one eye on the bank and the balance and the material aspect. It's got to be, I know you can't do a lot of things without money, I appreciate that, but money should not be the dominating factor. The true spirit doesn't need, in a sense, it doesn't need organization and it doesn't need property. The true spirit is something within which by its very nature will grow and expand and it will embrace others by the example you set it. If you set the example, then others will see something in you and they want to know what it is you've got. That's the true spirit, that's the true way of progressing. It's not in power and position and money and temples those things important though they seem to be are basically material they may be based on the spiritual realization but the edifice itself is crumbling all these great so-called religions over the centuries begin to crumble because they're built not on sure foundation they're built on sand and not a rock the rock of truth is ignored here in this lesson. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no, you dear people, you've got something very concrete and very real and very wonderful. But one must see it for what it is, the spirit that is behind it, 
the eternal spirit of eternal realization and truth and there may be examples there may be people that will be used to expound that truth uh, and they in themselves to some extent have to lose their own identity they become the vessel through which the truth flows but you see anything that becomes material to the extent that it embraces enormous amounts of money or property or what have you that's when you have to become a very suspicious have the people lost the true track you see you can look at it all through history I mean it's not peculiar to today I'm not saying that man shouldn't have possessions and if he uses those possessions in the way in which they should be used to expand truth and give comfort and joy to others but the point is the basic truth is that life continues death is not the end if there is nothing beyond the so called death as you term it there would be no point in religion there would be no point in anything it would cease to matter what you do or how you went about it you've got a great fundamental spiritual realization and the truth but you must keep it on that level you may tread the earth world to some extent because you have to in a material sense and you have to individually you have to concern yourself with your bank balance and all that obviously but don't get taken in by these people who want vast sums of money to build this or do that because invariably they've got something else which to them is much more important in what they intended in the beginning when they probably started off with great spiritual aspiration and were very sincere and very genuine in the first instance but they've sometimes lost the track, lost the way and they want material aggrandizement they want material benefits they want material properties and what have you once that develops you know they're on the wrong track they've got away from the essential truth which was given to them you know I am going to depth on this but with the great prophets and the great teachers of old Jesus had nowhere to lay his head he was supposed to have said render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's in other words give the property and the money to those people that need it or want it or think they should have it you stick to the things that are of the spirit for they're the things that are vital they're the things that are eternal they can never be taken from you the money and the property can be taken away all sorts of things can happen that you can lose all those things but the true spirit the realization that you have and the knowledge and the experience that you have of eternal life and eternal things these are the realities they are the things that matter when you step out of that body the old body will decay and there'll be nothing but you'll be vital you'll be alive you'll be spiritually aware spiritually conscious you've got to get into the realization that that is the vital part the rest is important to a point but not essential <coughs> Made me want to be a better person. Then. Do what? You made me want to be a better person. Well, you can say that about everybody. Everybody in this room, we should term it, could be better than they are <laughs> if they made a little bit more of an effort and perhaps became a little more self-sacrificing. I'm not condemning anyone. No one on this side ever condemns anybody. People condemn themselves by their conscience, if that's what you want to call it. But you lot are all right you've got a great truth a great understanding a great realization you're struggling to do the best you can under sometimes difficult circumstances you have to sometimes make allowances because nothing is perfection you're not perfect neither are we we're all on different levels of awareness we're all progressing to some extent making a mark somewhere along the line but you lot are all right but at the same time don't be deceived by those who want vast sums of money and they want this and they want that because they've lost the trail they've lost the track they've deviated from the truth they may not admit it they may not try to show it they may make all sorts of excuses look at some of those religious organizations that you have in your world who keep on appealing for more and more money they want to do this they want to do that how much of that is genuine you want to be careful try to do that which you feel is the right thing as best you can make allowances and make donations if you feel you must or if it's going to a good cause one should always try to do what one can materially as well as spiritually but don't be carried away by some of these people 
who really are making use of you and they're not truly what they represent or make out to be and often those who pray the best are the worst they're the ones who seem to be making a big headway and an impression but if you've got to know how much they're tucking away here, there and everywhere hiding it in this bank and that bank you wouldn't give them a sou no, you've got to be sensible you've got to be intelligent you've got to be spiritual yes, by all means, as best you can be but you can't buy spirituality you cannot buy the things of the spirit with money those things are not viable you've got to earn those things unless you earn them by your effort by your sacrifices I mean it's what you do it's what you give of yourself not necessarily what you've given from the bank it's what you've given from your effort you're putting yourself often in a position where it's a great effort a great strain and sometimes you think oh dear I can't do any more I've done my wax or then that's okay you realise that but the point is it's what you are and what you attempt to do even if you don't always achieve it's not making a donation it's sometimes easy for some people to sit down and write a <laughs> check out for whatever it is you know and post it off you know well this made them nation, you know but to make an effort and do something of yourself from yourself that's the reality it's not the money it's not the check it's what you are from within your innermost self how much you can give and give of yourself in love and in the desire to do the work of the spirit uh, you see I, I, I could go into depth on it there are so many people in your world trying to buy their way into heaven you can't buy your way it's no good making a donation to the church or in your will because you think that will help you to get through the main gates because you'll probably go around the back door you know it, it, I get fed up with some of these people they give me the watches you know reality of spirit is completely and absolutely from the innermost self from within of the spirit and when you're released from that from that physical body from that whatever you like to refer to it as that corpse you're out of it you're in it in the reality out of the duplicity as you call it or whatever you like to refer to it as of the old cell where you're you know I wish I could explain it but you know you lot have got something that is very precious and it's up to you what you do with it and don't think you can buy your way I'm not suggesting that any of you do but the point is that you've got to earn it this is the only way to earn it and that is to give of yourself in love and in harmony to do the things that sometimes are hard to do to give, give, give that is the way in which you find your real self and discover what you really are deep down inside that is the key that unlocks all the doors it's, it's not the key of the bank <laughs> mm. what? could I ask you about Margaret and Jim's son? yes, everything has been done doctors have been there and uh, things are making quite progress and we have no doubt although it will take some time he'll get through all this and it'll come out um, well it'll take time but he's going to be alright Marshall's been with him constantly and so have other people as well he'll come out on top uh, and I think that from this will come something which may not seem possible but which will be in the long run good it'll take six months perhaps perhaps a bit longer but he'll come out and he'll be back to what you refer to as normal but I think that he will be a changed boy and I'm quite sure that what has happened terrible though it is out of that cometh some good you know you've just got to realise this you know I love you lot and if all this is going down to that seaside bleeding place you know yeah, uh, yeah. well I mean what he is I mean I hope you lot will come down sometime because I miss not talking to you because you're all rather lovely people well I mean you've got no one's perfect but I mean <laughs> I look forward to seeing you <laughs> well you will Mickey yeah well <laughs> you make me laugh I could say but I won't what are the vibes of the house like Mickey oh they're all right <laughs> Oh, well, the water will wash away a lot of the bad things. <laughs> well, <laughs> you are trying to cheer your video. Oh, are you kidding? No, yeah. no, he'll be all right once she gets sorted out. <laughs> oh, that's for old Robert. I don't know what we're going to do with him. 
He is really down in the dumps, eh, you Robert? I think the English weather's got to me, Mickey. <laughs> well, that's all right. It's only for a short time, yes. and you'll go back to whatever, you know, yes. and you'll be all right. Play my tapes, listen to me, all what Mioko told me. I'll be all right. I don't know. You're a bit of a case anyway. <laughs> Has Rosie had a hand in this, Mickey? Has what? Rosie had a hand in this. She never shows up. No, I don't think she would. No, with all due respect, I shouldn't say this, should I? She does come occasionally, but I don't think she gets involved. I think she had enough of it when she was on your side. Of course, she's interested in what you boys get up to, and she's concerned, obviously. But so she doesn't make a habit of running back and forth. I think she was happy to leave your world and be with her mum and dad and all the people over here, her brother, you know, and shopping. You know how she loved all shopping. You know, <laughs> yes, he knows. She, she and her music and all that. I thought perhaps we'd have got Mr. Wilde as there's a book out. Oh, you know. You see, over here, no matter who you was when on earth, no matter how famous you were, uh, uh, no matter how talented you were, uh, you're not necessarily exactly the same over here. Are you continuing whatever it is you are good at or interested in or wanting to achieve? Yes, to some extent. Uh, but names are not important anymore to us. No, but their uh, personalities know. sometimes are interesting. Do what? Their personalities are interesting. Oh, yes, but you see there again, uh, the personality may be very much the same. When, especially when we come back and we have to pierce the darkness and the gloom of your world, you know. We exert ourselves and we take on to some extent the old self as we was deliberately. Uh, but over here we may have changed a great deal, indeed most people have, and we've got away from certain aspects of the old self and we've advanced mentally and spiritually into a different level of consciousness. You see, there are many levels. People yeah. talk about being dead. They talk about the spirit world as if it's just one world. It ain't. It's thousands of different states of being according to one's evolution and how you progress from one state to another state and you have to earn it you have to work at it you don't suddenly get floated right up to the tip top and all that no be, it's not like that it'd be interesting for some of those people to come and tell us how they are progressing oh yeah well speed. when old Les is at his rest and all the rest you will do something <laughs> when he goes through his rest <laughs> yes. yeah, down in this old place you know <laughs> See what we can do, eh? Yeah, we would like some interesting people to come and talk to us and give us... Well, what's wrong with me? I don't do so bad. No, I know you don't. I mean, I'd after all said that, let me tell you, it's not what I say, it's what is impressed upon me to say. And there's always a group around me who are much more highly involved and indeed much more experienced. And I pick up from them what I... I have to give. Transfer, I mean, yeah. I, not that I don't know a lot myself, I'm but sure the point is. is that I have also the sense like a medium, you see. Mm -hmm. I tell! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mickey, you know people don't need to worry about kicking the bucket. What? Vicky, are you together with your parents? Are you in the oh, room? I see them, but are I'm not with them. I mean, are you on the same level? No. Yeah, well, I think I don't appear on. What? But no, they're in their own environment, in their own way. They weren't suited to each other really. They see each other. They're you what you call friendly, well? but they're not living together. They're not married. But then you see them as well, do you? Uh, well, occasionally. Occasionally. But they're not well. Mm. I wish I could explain. When it. somebody is reincarnated, Mickey, is there a notice goes up? This person is now reincarnated. You <laughs> can't see them anymore. You're daft. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean a notice go up? <laughs> Mickey. What? Hurry up, power's getting down. Uh, what? Despina. Do you remember Despina? Yeah, of course I do, bless her. How up. is she? She's all right, but she's... You know, well, of course, I could explain it, and I will, but it takes a little time. She, one day, maybe, I hope, she'll be able to come back and communicate, but uh, it's it's early days. Yeah, I thought it might be. She's all right, but she, it, she had a rough passage. Yeah, yeah well, give her a But all she's up. improving. Anyway, I can't, I, as I love you, I can't help it. Uh, a flutter by sends her love, Bob, Thank and you, keep Mickey. your chins up, Thank double you. ones as well, and don't worry, God's good if you believe in God, and God ain't a man sitting on a throne neither. He's the eternal vibration of life which is in every human being, and in all God's creation. You see, people think of God as a person, 
I suppose it's from the distant past they had to create him, you know. But man is in the image, in a sense, but it's a spiritual realisation about God. I wish I could explain it. But anyway, I have to go. My love and God bless. Cheerio! Bye! Bye. Bye.